Hi, this is Colleen Parsons, and this is part one of nose, mouth, and throat assessment. There's quite a bit here on um, anatomy, and you'll have to review that on your own. You do have access to this uh, PowerPoint in your modules. This is your skills assessment, and these are the questions you'll be most attuned to for nursing. So you don't have to know everything there is to know, obviously, about the nose, mouth, or throat, unless that becomes your specialty. And of course, there are specialties of that. So uh, the thing I do want you to remember here is that we are not doing comprehensive questions. We are doing uh, an ISBAR in place of that. And the other thing that I want you to know here is that while some of the classes are actually um, going into the mouth and putting your fingers in your friend's mouth, we're not going to do that. But I do want you to know that there are cases where you do need to actually put your fingers in your patient's mouth. One of those cases is if the patient is storing food in their uh, cheeks. And we'll go, hopefully I'll remember to go into that in a minute. And if not, Remind me to do that and go review that in class. So quickly review. I'm just skipping through these. One of the things I want you to know about the frontal sinuses, not all of your sinuses are developed at birth. Some of them, this one develops after birth, and your frontal sinuses don't really develop until um, teenagehood. So they start to develop, I think it's around seven, eight years old, and then you're an adolescent by the time they're fully developed. Olfactory receptors are the hair cells that line the roof of your nasal cavity, and it is the whole full upper third of the septum. Now the other thing I want you to know is that in uh, healthcare we call these nares, we don't call them nostrils. Oh, here is where it says um, the frontal sinuses start between start to grow between uh, seven and eight years old, and they reach the full size after puberty. Uh, do really run through this. There's a lot to know. So inside the mouth, one of the things some of you back in my day, tonsils were removed pretty automatically in any children who had a predisposition to strep throat or sore throats. I'm not even sure. I've never had strep. So uh, they didn't, they weren't doing strep tests back then. So I think if you just had enlarged sinus or enlarged tonsils several times, they would remove them. Now, most of your classmates will have these intact, and uh, there is a way, and I think it's here in the slides, that we actually measure how large your tonsils are. Oh, here's the hard palate. So if you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, the hard thing is your hard palate, and if you move your finger or your tongue further back, that's the soft palate back there. You have salivary ducts here. That's actually your parotid gland. There and there, there's one on either side. And your submandibular glands with their ducts right here under your tongue. The frenulum is that web-like thing under your tongue that helps your tongue stay in place. Now, some children are born with an elongated frumulum, and that uh, prevents them from speaking clearly or even nursing well, if, especially if they are breastfeeding. 
so the pediatrician will often go in and snip it. There's a big movement. There's a, a local dentist that will use um, a laser to snip that, and it's much more difficult on the child to have that laser surgery done than a quick snip in the pediatric physician's office. So here's a <clears throat> um, here's about teeth growth. Now, another interesting point is that salivation really doesn't start until the baby's three months old. So the baby will drool, and that's when the parents think that, oh, the baby's teething, but that's not really what's going on there. The teeth don't generally come in until about six months old. And then they will consistently gain teeth until they are about two and a half. Then they will, at about um, five, six years old, they will start losing their teeth and they will lose 12 teeth, which are replaced by permanent teeth. Uh, for pregnant women, stuffiness is not uncommon, and the gums may bleed by simple tooth brushing because that's what's happening for pregnant women. And the nose and ears continue to grow we've talked about that here it's saying that they just appear to continue to grow because of how subcutaneous fat is placed that's probably true atropic tissues ulcerate easily and you have an increased risk of older people for oral um, infections and things and this is especially important for older people to get good dental care because that can cause cardiac issues. Older people also have a diminished sense of taste and smell. <clears throat> so uh, there are cultural and genetic um, predispositions in the mouth, nose, and throat. Some people, you know, the little thing that hangs down in the back of your throat is called a uvula. And sometimes that is bifurcated. So you will actually look like you have two uvula or there will be a little dent in there. So it looks kind of weird, a split. It occurs about 10% in American Indian groups. Cleft lip and cleft palate are pretty common in Asians. Uh, moderately common in whites and the least common in blacks. My sister was born with a cleft lip. I'm sorry, not a cleft lip. Cleft palate. She should have had a cleft lip because she doesn't have any bone tissue here keeping the front teeth in, even though the front teeth came in for her. And she had that surgically repaired when she was one. It wasn't really well done because they didn't really perfect it. Her child, who is now 18, was born with a cleft lip as well. She's had a couple different surgical repairs on her cleft palate. I'm not sure if I said cleft lip or cleft palate, but she only had a cleft palate as well. And she, um, they both have significant speech impediments as a result. Now you will sometimes see People with a little bit of a scar here or here on their lip, and that's most likely a surgical repair of a cleft lip. Some pretty famous people, um, you can see that they have a repair. And that's the end of part one. Go back and review your anatomy.